What is going on guys, Money Webby here, back again on Thursday with a nice three game slate here tonight. I got a broken down view of six of my favorite players on the board, my money six. So before we get going, be sure to drop a like in the video, it really means a lot and really helps me out. So thank you if you can do that. Uh, we had some really tough luck yesterday with the plays, some guys getting in foul trouble like Whiteside and Tristan Thompson. And Thompson did really well in limited minutes, just that he got in foul trouble. And then the Cavs got blown out, so it was a perfect storm of bad things happening there. Uh, Aaron Gordon was pretty good. Um, I can't really think of the top of my head of all the other guys that kind of let me down. Uh, D'Angelo Russell was really bad. He couldn't hit any shots that he took, and then he got pulled out uh, in the third quarter because he was just missing everything. Uh, that's kind of what happened to D'Angelo Russell, though. He kind of is either unstoppable or just can't, can't be stopped missing, pretty much. So that really sucked, but we got some fire plays here tonight hopefully we can have some better luck with this slate so let's get into it though i'm gonna go with kevin duran here really good matchup going against houston a team that's been worse against small forwards this year um since they lost trevor reza and uh, kevin duran his usage rate has been really solid without steph curry on the court he's put up 23 shots against atlanta 24 against the clips not as efficient from the field by en by any means but still uh his stat making ability is definitely up, and um, Draymond Green is questionable. I would imagine he does play in this game because it looked like he went through a shoot-around, but something definitely to monitor. Uh, there will be some value opening up from that if Draymond Green is out, and it would help out Kevin Durant a little bit with some more possible rebounds. So at 11,100, I think he'll be the prime go-to guy on offense with that matchup at small forward. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. As my first guy, then I'm going to go with Chris Paul. He's been a little bit up and down this year, but I feel like this is the kind of matchup where he can blow up. He has that upside. We know that he had 47 drafting points the other night. I didn't reach his normal minutes with only 32 against Denver. Um, I think it was because Houston was up a good amount in the fourth quarter where they didn't need a Russian CP3. Uh, so he lost a few minutes there, but this is really a big game for the Rockets to get some good momentum beating a team like the Warriors. And we know that Chris Paul... Uh, he was the main kind of thing in that playoff series, which really let the Rockets down with him getting hurt, and he couldn't come back in Game 7. So maybe he'll look for a little bit of a revenge game here, going off to beat the Warriors, and uh, he has a really good upside, I think, in this matchup going against Quinn Cook. I think he can score over 20 points, get some more assists. I feel like he's due for a little bit of a bounce back in the assist column. Um, he had some bigger assist totals at the beginning of the year, um, but he's been a little bit down recently. But this seems like a kind of matchup where he can get those assists on uh, James Harden. Could struggle on some defense against uh, Klay Thompson and if they put Iguodala on him or something like that. So at 8,000, I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my second guy. Then I'm going to go with Jamal Murray. This could be... Um, this could be a back, like a backfire type play as the Denver Nuggets. They are pretty big favorites against the Hawks or like 13-point favorites. But I think Jamal Murray, even if this game does turn into a blowout, I feel like he could do enough to return value before it turns into a blowout. So he's played a lot of minutes recently. Um, it's just that his shot hasn't been dropping as much from three. Uh, but we know this is another guy here that's a very streaky shooter. He can get absolutely on fire like we saw against the Seas. He dropped 48 points in that game. And at home, he's typically a better shooter. Um, if you look at the splits, 33% from three compared to 17% on, on five games on the road. And the Hawks is one of the worst teams defensively. Uh, especially against three-point shooters, along a 38% clip to three-point shots. So I think Jamal Murray could catch fire in this game and uh, kind of bounce back here. He's due for a big game, a lot of points, and Jokic is a little bit banged up, so maybe that makes him a little bit more passive in this game. We know that Jokic can turn very passive, especially in kind of games where I feel like the other scorers can get going, and this is one of those games where he could try to feed Jamal Murray to get his shot going. So at 6,500, I'm going to go ahead and lock in Murray for a bounce back game. Then I'm going to go with Torian Prince. He looked extremely good um, against the Warriors the other night, scoring very well. He dropped 34 draft game points, and he had a solid night against the Lakers the game before that for 37 draft game points. So it looks like he's trending up a bit. Uh, he did kind of go through an injury where he wasn't get as, getting as many minutes in some of these games prior to that. Uh, but 39 minutes, 35 minutes, a really good sign, especially if this game can stay close. I think Prince could have another solid game. The Nuggets do struggle against small forwards as well. Um, so I think he can just drop over 30 drafting points and be able to be the number one scoring option for this Hawks team. So I'm going to go ahead and lock in uh, Prince there. And for my final guy, Alex Len, with uh, Deadman out of this game, Len could get some extra run again here. 
He is questionable, though, so definitely got to keep an eye on that news uh, to see if he plays or not. But if he doesn't play, uh, then Miles Plumlee becomes a really interesting option at only 3,300. And Mason Plumlee, his brother, is on the Nuggets, so maybe he'll be a little bit of a grudge match there with the brother uh, rivalry there. So, but... If, uh, if Alex Lund does give it a go, though, I'm guessing he'll get around like 20 to 25 plus minutes here, so long as it stays close again, like I said, and uh, be able to flirt the double-double. It seems like when he gets a good amount of minutes, especially when he was on the Hawks, I mean, not on the Hawks, on uh, the Suns, he was able to have some big games. So, and the Denver Nuggets, their defense against centers hasn't been great recently. I feel like some centers have had some big games against them, so Alex Lund, uh, he's, he needs to prove himself in this like year for the Hawks. He's really... Uh, kind of been struggling his whole entire career. He was a high draft pick, so 4,600 against the Nugs, and also uh, Jokic a little bit banged up, like I said, so maybe when, if he's 100%, he could take advantage of that matchup. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my final guy of the core five. Then we're going to go with Andre Iguodala. With this game being a really big game for the Warriors, and uh, just to kind of get a nice win over the Rockets, the team that they've matched up with in the conference finals, I could see Iguodala getting around 30 minutes in this game. He had a really solid game against the Clips, 14-5-4, and four, and good for 28 drafting points, and, and just 26 minutes against the Hawks, he dropped 21 drafting points. He's shooting very well. Another guy that's able to fill it up with some rebounds and assists, and he can be active with some steals and blocks. The Rockets do turn the ball over a good amount. Uh, so this is a really big game, I think, for uh, the Warriors, like I said, and get Andre Iguodala some more run with Steph Curry out. That's what they kind of did against the Clippers. They went to him over Quinn Cook. So if this game stays close, I think they'll do the same thing here, and Iguodala can get us over 20 drafting points, returning some solid value. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my final guy of the money six. So you got CP3. I think he'll fill it up tonight more than he has been. Jamal Murray, I think, will be able to score a lot more tonight. Uh, Kevin Durant, extremely good matchup against the Rockets. I think he could drop over 30 points. He's been the face of the NBA news recently, and now he can kind of shut that up with a huge performance here tonight. Then Alex Len with Deadman out. I think he could have a nice big game, some rebounds and points. And then Iguodala with him getting some extra run without Steph. And then Torian Prince, who's been trending up. I think he can keep that going against the Nugs here tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to slap a like if you got anything out of value in this one. If you enjoyed the video, really means a lot. And definitely subscribe if you haven't already. They continue to get these videos the remainder of the season. Hopefully we have some better luck here tonight. But with the two-game slates, um, it's easier to get lucky, I guess, with only only worrying about like two games. Like I completely avoided the Clips and the Spurs game with the Spurs being on back-to-back. That could be a low-scoring game. But good luck here tonight, and we'll see you back here again next time.